this week we've got a visit from AUIT, Australian YouTuber, Facebook group moderator. So we are on our best behaviour. There's only a few rules all members have to abide by. Rule number one, no murder in the community. Murdering people outside the community on the other hand, well, that's none of my business. Number two is much more serious. Don't put others down. Be positive, no matter what. And finally, number three, the most important rule that stands above all else is no self-promo. Don't forget it. Hey look, I made this cool new video. You actually won't believe the five ways you can make your video look more professional with these tricks. Cinematographers hate this. Wow. You young sir are being banned for self-promotion. I'm going to delete all memory of you. It'll be like you were never born, you naughty, naughty boy. He was just showing me something in private. It's not self-promotion. And you sir are also banned from the AUYT Facebook fan page. How dare you? You could have been so much more constructive. Instead, you weren't positive enough. You could have said to me, thank you ever so much, William, for upholding the elegant and eloquent rules of the Facebook page. But you didn't. You're barred. Don't worry, William. I'll defend the YouTube constitution. That's murder. Maybe even homicide. But who cares? They're no longer members of our community. Ta-ta! It's the Davis and Dennis Show with Davis Fang, Dennis Fang, Esmeralda Parrick, Adam McPhilbin, Chopper Green, and guest William Broom. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Davis Show. What are you doing here, Dennis? You're supposed to be dead. <laughs> Hi, everyone. And yes, Davis, in fact, you did kill me to death. But don't worry, because I got better. Well, damn. On this week's show, however, we are bringing on a little class because we've got our first ever Englishman on the show. Woo! LBGTIQ plus activist, Australian YouTuber group moderator and radio host and OG YouTuber, William Broom. Wow. Actually, he's not completely English, however, because he's sort of assimilated because he describes himself as being born in England but perfected here in Australia. Ooh, so that's kind of like us. We're made in Australia from imported ingredients. Um, mm, sure. To pay our respects to our guests, we're covering up our Mao Zedong plaque with a portrait of the Queen. We also have um, a portrait of the Australian Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, <laughs> beside the Queen. So let's see where his loyalties lie, shall we? <laughs> yep, let's have a peek into the green room. As we wait for William to finish paying his respects, it's time for our Drama Explained segment. <laughs> so over the past week, wildfires threatened many parts of Northern and Southern California, including the livelihoods of the thousands of YouTubers who live there. Something else that threatened the livelihoods of the many YouTubers in the region was Defy Media. Yep, just last week, one of the most prominent YouTube production companies who own brands such as Smosh and Clever decided to cease operations, with as much notice as the German invasion of the Soviet Union in 1941. They were both the result of foolish decision making, and they both hurt a lot of people, quite badly. One slightly more than the other, however. Someone who escaped from the fire that was Defy's management early was Anthony Padilla, who departed Smosh last summer. But even he didn't avoid getting burnt. Last Wednesday, he made a video called My Thoughts About Smosh Slash Defy Media Shutting Down, where he admits that he sold Smosh for stock in what ultimately became Defy. In other words, he let go of one of the most valuable brands on YouTube for what amounted to practically nothing, as the company never became public. 
That would be like throwing away an empty can of Coca-Cola when you can actually get 10 cents for it if you take it to your local recycling centre. I mean, why doesn't everyone do that? <laughs> meanwhile, someone... Meanwhile, does anyone remember Ava... <laughs> <laughs> With a oh. one ten cents. <laughs> Meanwhile, does anyone remember Ava Gordy? Well, she was one of the hosts who lost their jobs after the news channel SourceFed shut down early last year. But don't worry, because she soon found another job at another news channel. Clever. But would you guess it? Less than two years later, she's out of a job again. Coincidence? I think not. It's clear that hiring Ava is the death sentence for any online news company. So let's hope that she goes to the Philip DeFranco show and the Young Turks soon so that we can finally have a chance to win that new show streamy. Yay! <laughs> she could be our Stephen Elope, the guy that Microsoft hired to take down Nokia so that they could run it down and buy it for scrap. No one, will get no one gets that, but I get it. So now let's introduce William. <laughs> Thanks for coming. It's a pleasure. Great to see you. It's always so good to see you. How wonderful. I've wanted to be on your show a long time. Oh, thank you so much. That's kind. And I've always wanted you on the show, so. Yay. Yay. Much made in heaven. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay, so when I met you, I knew you as a scary, like, moderator on the Australian YouTubers group. You did. But now I know that you do a lot more than just being a scary policeman on the internet. Isn't that right? I do. I mean, I love being an admin on the YouTube, the Australian YouTube community mm. page. It's brilliant. I do get involved, but I tend to come in if somebody's been a naughty girl or a naughty boy. No. And I tell them off, and then I add members, and then I might even delete a couple if they're very oh. naughty and badly behaved. What's the worst ever comment you've got? At? I won't reveal, but usually maybe a little bit the odd bit of hate speech or something like that, or a personal attack on somebody. But we have a wonderful group of people. We're very civil to each other. Oh, yes. I and mean, we only have the best. We're very select. YouTubers are so nice to each other. Aren't We're they? all wonderful, you know? We are like all best friends and family. Mm. Okay, I hear that you were an OG YouTuber. What's an OG? An original. Oh, that's a new word. OG, I'm going to remember that. Hey, Ava, when <laughs> I'm an OG. People from 2013, they think they're an OG YouTuber. Oh, Do you know, it's funny, right? People talk to me. Uh, somebody was saying the other day that they were like at the first YouTube gathering or YouTube meetup in Melbourne a couple of years ago. I was thinking, I went to one in 2007. <laughs> what are you on about, love? You know, I am an old timer, less of the old, but I am one of the originals. 2006 I had my channel, and I've been going to YouTube gatherings since 2007. Angry Aussie and a couple of others organised the first one in Melbourne, Federation Square, and it was wonderful. How would you describe your channel? My channel mm. is quite eclectic, but lately there's been a lot of interviews, particularly uh -huh. with LGBTIQ, queer, gay, lesbian, trans, intersex activists. Uh, there was a lot of stuff done on marriage equality. Yes. Also, the first Mardi Gras was in 1978, and the people who were there are called 78ers, and they were at other events that same year. I've interviewed them. I love interviewing people about their stories. Um, you also, um, you, you, so basically use different mediums to tell your stories. Yeah. I hear that you're writing a a book now. I'm writing a wonderful book. You, everybody in this room is far too young. You're far too young. Back in the mm -hmm. 60s and 70s and 80s in Sydney, there was a group of performers called Lay Girls. Oh. Uh, most of them were trans, but some of them were men who dressed up in drag. And they were all caught an all-male review, although technically they were trans. Um, and they were referred to as female impersonators, which we wouldn't refer to a lot of them now. And one of the original ones in 1963 was a man called Stan Munro, originally from the UK, was a child actor, been in films and stuff, migrated here. And I'm writing his autobiography at the moment. So many stories to tell. And he always laughs, but I call him a star of stage and Amazing. screen. Good. <laughs> um, so you've got a journalistic yeah. background, and you've also done some acting. You know, when I first came to Australia, right? Mm. I became an extra. I came here in 2006 wow. on a working holiday. I'd been here as a backpacker before. And I joined, I was singing karaoke at a place called oh. the Covent Garden Hotel in the city. I was singing a cold chisel song, you're too young to know cold chisel. And a woman came up to me and goes, <laughs> you like performing, would you like to know my agent's details. She wrote down, she has an agent. Agent, I thought you said Asian. <laughs> oh, no, I've got my Asian here and his brother. Um, <laughs> 
Was that inappropriate? Anyway, so she gave me a card and I went for an interview with her agent and I got some bit part actor work and an extra work. And my first role was on Home and Away. My first bit part role was as a Burns patient in Home and Away. <laughs> but do you know who I shared my makeup room with? <laughs> a young Chris Hemsworth. Whoa. The most friendly, down-to-earth actor I've ever met. How old was he back then? He would have been in his early 20s. He started chatting to me, which a lot of actors don't do, because you're not always supposed to talk to the actors until you're given permission okay. to. He spoke to me, and we were talking about theatre and pantomime in the UK, because he noticed I had an English accent. And, and I said, oh, you should go to the UK, maybe do a bit of theatre. Little did I know that a few years later, he'd be a Hollywood star. And I'm so happy for him, because you know you sometimes meet people and they're not particularly friendly or a bit up themselves. And you, then you see they've done really well and you think, damn, how did they do so well? Davis, I hate him. I can't stand him either. Mm. But that's another story. But Chris <laughs> Hensworth, it couldn't happen to a better person. I love him. He's brilliant. It's such a heartwarming story. I think so. <laughs> yes, um, so you've done lots of activism. Yeah. However, I've also heard you've been to North Korea. Ah. What, I assume that these two things don't really mix. I mean, obviously there are aspects of mm. activism which influence places I like to visit. My North Korean trips, I went twice, yeah. oh, was because I'm twice. fascinated by Korean history, Korean culture, K-pop. And I've been to South Korea a few times. I love Seoul, one of my favourite Asian cities. Mm. I could live there happily. And I went to the border, the demilitarised zone, which uh -huh. divides the south yep. and the north. And I see a northern border guard on the other side and I thought, this is getting ridiculous. I've got to start visiting. So I visited. How did I, you do that? Did you pay the guard? No. <laughs> yeah, what I went over the DMZ. No, I, I went with a tour organisation, a oh. British-based company in Beijing. You've got to go via Beijing. So I went there and I did seven or eight days and I travelled around North Korea, or the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, DPRK as it's known. And <laughs> I went around and then I went again a second time, a year, 11 months later, to the Pyongyang International Film Festival. Very different trip, but I went and met actors from Korean movies. I visited their version of Hollywood, I call it Pollywood, because it's in Pyongyang, the capital and I met music composers who do the musical schools for movies. So both trips could have been the same, but they weren't. They were completely different. I'd like to go again one more time, but take my partner next time. That sounds amazing. Like, everyone assumes that going to North Korea is unbelievably dangerous, and it's scary, and you shouldn't do it. But you seem to have had a really good experience. You know, Would you recommend it? There is an argument about sending money to North Korea, uh -huh. but it, it's going to the people you know, who are running the place, the regime. But there's not enough tourism yet to do that. I think one of the, the best ways of learning about cultures is to meet people, is to engage and have dialogue. Rather exactly. than just say, I hate you, you're bad, you're this, you're that, seeing the world in black and white. And I think things have to improve. There's still a way to go, but things are happening slowly. That sounds lovely. Thank you. Okay, um, coming up in the internet news, which is our next segment, we've got a story about sort of irrelevant YouTubers, um, Alfie Deza and Marcus Butler. They're talking about how they've changed over the years, how they're no longer really making videos and they've kind of moved on. Mm. As an OG YouTuber too, how do you feel about that? As an OG YouTuber? Yes. I you love were this there before term. them even. I think it's fine. Mm. Honestly, most people who used to go to those early meetups in the late 2000s, early 2010s, I don't see making videos anymore. And if they do, it might just be occasional. Some have kept their channels. A lot of them have wiped their channels. I don't have a problem with that. Because it's like a friendship. You might have temporary friendships. You might have permanent friendships. I love YouTube because it serves my purpose very well. Other people, it may not serve their purpose as it grows and evolves. I have absolutely no issue with it at all. OK, and now it's time for the Internet News. It's the Internet News with Davis and Dennis. The biggest battle of our generation is currently unfurling before our very eyes, easily beating the importance of, say, KSI and Logan Paul's boxing match, or the war with the Soviets and the Nazis. <laughs> Today, we stand at a defining moment in history. Do we really? Yes, because PewDiePie just beat Indian music label T-Series to 70 million subscribers. <laughs> And that's despite the social media tracking website Social Blade predicting otherwise. This is clearly a huge win, a huge win for the underdog. A win for small YouTubers everywhere, in fact. I think I'm going to elect PewDiePie as the small YouTuber of the year. <laughs> we can band together 
a small YouTubers and defeat evil. Um, that is T the Indian um, channel T series. Um, slightly problematic here. Number one, PewDiePie, a small YouTuber, really. And number two, T series. Just because they're Indian doesn't mean they're evil. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> well, moving on, Vine is back from the dead. Woo! Not as a zombie, rather a vampire, because it's called Bite. <laughs> <laughs> in recent years, Vine has had a very turbulent death. It should have probably died in 2016, but it was later revived by its founder, Dom Hoffman, and then it died again because of funding, and the fact that you can't just sell a company called Vine and then start a new one called Vine 2 because trademarks, but now it's back as Bite. Now, I don't know about you, but vampires are evil, and I think that some things are better left dead. Like musically, Blackberries and Bebo. <laughs> Bad examples actually, because they all had comebacks. <laughs> anyway, a lot of people think that nanobots and nano people are the feature, but it turns out Ant Man wasn't a documentary. Damn, these mockumentaries trick me every single day. <laughs> In the real world, however, it turns out that I'm a nano person despite standing a lofty 5 foot 4. And yet, I'm not a superhero, but instead, I'm being targeted? Targeted by brands? <gasps> a story from New York Times. That's <laughs> cool! <laughs> a story from New York Times this week claims that brands are now targeting nano influencers. Oh! Targeting us. Oh, oh. oh Dennis, <laughs> I think by nano influencers they mean people with a comparatively small social media following, oh. not physically small people. Oh. Oh. Well, according to the New York Times, nano influencers are people with as few as 1,000 followers, but are still willing to advertise products on social media. They report that brands are now preferring them to larger influencers because their lack of fame is one of the qualities that make them approachable. Oh. When they recommend a shampoo or lotion or furniture brand on Instagram, their word seems as genuine as oh. advice from a friend. But, um, we don't even have a thousand subscribers. Uh, what's underneath Nano? Oh. In other news, Eliza Koshi 1.0, I mean Lily Singh Superwoman, <laughs> has decided to take an extended break from YouTube for her mental health. What? At this rate, the only OG YouTuber who hasn't left the platform would be... Onision! <laughs> who still makes daily videos somehow. <laughs> and by the way, did you know that he's, um, he just came out as gay? He made a come out video. Um, last week, and barely anyone noticed. <laughs> Although, I mean, um, making a coming out video is one of the best ways to revive a dying channel. But after posting a video of your girlfriend having a seizure and not calling the ambulance, oh marrying God. underage girls, and even harassing Shane Dawson online, I think um, oh. there's simply not much shock factor anymore in just making a come out video. Yeah, I mean, like Shane Dawson abusing him. That's where I draw the line. Mm. <laughs> oh God, is the year somehow 2012 again? Because Alfie Days has collaborated with Marcus Butler this week. And on his main channel, no less, which has remained rather dormant recently. The duo in the almost hour-long podcast talked a long time about their latest business ventures, which I found very fun. <laughs> the video reminded me of the time when I was in the country house with my mama and papa studying for an accounting exam. Which, to be honest, isn't that bad, actually. <laughs> oh god, we're going back in time again, except now it's 2009, because Christina Horner a YouTuber who hasn't uploaded in over nine months has begun another round of NaNoWriMo videos. Yeah! NaNoWriMo, everyone knows, stands for National Novel Writing Month. It's a yearly challenge to write an entire novel in the month of November. Now, I can't remember which year it was that she began to do the challenge, but um, she's been doing it for over 10 years, so um, that means she has written at least 10 novels, and somehow, she still hasn't been offered a single book deal. I mean, Alfie Days, who is practically illiterate, has four books. 
Is there any justice left in this world? Well, for you justice fans out there, you may be interested in Chris Clemens's 25th birthday because he is raising money for the NYC rescue mission. Woo! While it's a great cause, as of yet, he has only raised $2,300 in six days, which is about 0.38 cents per subscriber, which is terrible. So, um, get donating, everyone. Yay, I love charity. If you love charity like me, then please consider giving a little to our Patreon. <laughs> Davis, come on, we don't do with that anymore. And something else that we won't be doing anymore, Dennis, is offending people. <laughs> because last week, you made a joke that was in seriously bad taste. <laughs> Would you like to tell the ladies and gentlemen what you did that was in such bad taste? Um, I might have accidentally said that um, ISIS people, people in ISIS, um, they're not very forthcoming in their fashion. How could you? In their beauty tips, but now I retract that comment. I apologize. They are very forthcoming in their fashion. In fact, I think they impose it upon other people a bit too forcefully. Maybe just a tad. And that is why we're going to be donating all of our proceeds to ISIS. <laughs> and that was the internet yeah! news. Hi guys, and welcome to our On What segment, which is our challenge segment. In this episode, we've got Willie. Um, he describes himself as being born in England, but perfected in Australia. But that leaves us with a question, like, is he going to be a traitor to the Queen for this, for the PM of Australia, Scott Morrison? How do you feel about this? I feel bonds are pretty fair dinkum. <laughs> wow. True blue, right? <laughs> Should be right. <laughs> so basically, um, do you think you've been assimilated into Australia well, or do you live in an English ghetto? Might as well have stayed in England. I love being here, and the people I'm friends with are friends because I like them. Wow. And I love Australians. It's unusual. You are the perfect immigrant. I've assimilated. <laughs> so Dennis is going to show William a picture. <laughs> and William, you'll have to say what it is. And then we'll determine if you said it in an English or an Australian way. And we'll see if you're more English or Australian via that. Strofe. <laughs> okay, so how do you describe this item? Thong. Wow. That's Australian, very Australian. <laughs> wow, really? You call them thongs? Oh, not in the UK, but I call them thongs. Oh, wow. I'm very Aussie-fied. You have definitely assimilated. Pauline would love me. Wow. I'm sure she would. Fantastic. Okay, the next picture is going to show... What are these? Oh, goodness. <laughs> Bye. Oh, Ignore yeah. the legs. <laughs> and I was going to say legs. I was going to say feet. Um, Underpants. Thousands. Underpants. Australian. Nah. Nah. Andy. Andy's mine. Okay, moving on from these gorgeous legs. Mm, wow. Yes. We shouldn't look. sexualize them like that. No, you can sexualize They're just legs. legs. What do you describe this car? What brand is it? Because in oh, Australia yeah. is, and in England, they're different Is it brands. a Holden? You call it a Holden. Is that a Holden? It's two for Australia then. Wow. In Australia, it's a Holden, a Holden. But in the UK, it's a Vauxhall. Oh, it's a Vauxhall, of course it is. But you, yeah. you called it a Holden, That's so. Very I do. Well it's done. very Australian. And you know why? Because when I moved to Australia, I decided I wanted to be Australian. Mm -hmm. So I use Australian terms. <laughs> um, next What's picture. The next item. Oh my God, these beige, what are they? They are trousers. That is very English. But there is another word to describe that type of trouser, but I've forgotten chinos. it. Chinos! That's it. I used to wear chinos before I are discovered these jeans. Are these chinos, Davis? Davis is a chino expert. These do look like chinos. Yeah, they are chinos. So and I call them very trousers. Nice Don't call them pants? I never call them pants. Because pants are... Because, unders. you know, it's one of the few words that I don't use the Aussie term, because I still think of pants as underpants. So if I put it on my Facebook or something, all my friends in the UK think I'm talking about... Undies. Undies. Okay, moving on. What is this? Have you seen one of these before? That's a dunny. <laughs> <laughs> Do you actually call them dunnies? No, I, I call them a toilet. <laughs> okay, what, what are these? These they're, are... They're not Anzac cookies, are they? 
You call them cookies. I, 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 well, I call them biscuits, but it's weird because biscuits, I live in Australia. Biscuits. I just automatically often use Aussie terms, sometimes Americanized. So I don't know if you say cookie or biscuit. biscuit. You just call them a biscuit. So I'd say that's English. Yeah, because Australian is Bicky. <laughs> oh, of course, Bicky, yes. You shorten everything. Uh, oh, God. Sunnies. Sunnies. Australian. Wow. I'm good at this, aren't I? I'm, I'm yeah, good. you're so I'm getting the hang of it after about Basically, 10 Basically, this pictures. is a, like a citizenship test. A citizenship test. Citizen. Citizenship Like, if you're too British, we would like expel you. Oh, heaven to Betsy. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay, these guys are doing something. They're having cigarettes at work. What he, is the He's got a called? fag in his hand. That's how I got started. Um, <laughs> he... He... They, that's having a smoko. Smoker. Smoker, where's that? Do you know the term? That's definitely Australian. I watch all the Aussie soaps. Neighbours Home and Away, Prisoner, yeah. Sons and Daughters, Country Practice, Young Doctors. Go I know them you. all. <laughs> Far too young. What is this? Bottle O. <laughs> Australian. I think in Aussie, this is the problem. <laughs> I can you're... use the British terms if you like. In England, we'd probably call it a bottle shop, but I don't even know. I've been away so long. They liquor say store? it's a liquor oh, store. Liquor yeah. store's more American. According to the website I use, it's a liquor store. I've never heard of that called that in the UK. <laughs> My website I use was a bad source. It was Wikipedia. I've heard of a few liquors, but um. Okay, what is this? This is a. Oh, well, I've never been with one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the girl next door. No, that that's a shadow. <laughs> it, it, it depicts something. The oh, it depicts, depicts something. a. S stripper, a sex worker. No, just, just, just a gender. beautiful woman. What gender? Yeah. Oh, a woman. A Shaila! <laughs> you said woman first. You're flying Gela. <laughs> oh, it's a lady. Line. It's apparently Sheila. Sheila, mate. Which is... So, are we saying that's English? Yes. Damn you. And the last one. These are like low-class people um, who are <laughs> drinking and pregnant at the same time. Burberry wedding anniversary. So, what would you call the this class of people? <laughs> Oh, I hate to be snobbish. Family. <laughs> family, yeah. That's my sister and my brother. Um, no, I would call it, um, you Aussies use this term, Bogan. <laughs> Bogan. Bogan. <laughs> Bogan. Bogan, is that correct? Bogan, yes, that's is that, Australian. That didn't come naturally, though. I love the Bogan. <laughs> okay, so they're not chavs? Uh, you see, chavs and bones are similar, but chavs go for more the bling element, whereas bogans tend to go for like the singlets and you know, all that. All and out common. Whereas the chavs, they like to try and appear a bit classy with all their Burberry jewellery and their Burberry Fun outfits. Fun fact, this picture depicts some rednecks. I can't see any Burberry in the picture. <laughs> oh, rednecks, you mean Australians. <laughs> That's the American term, so it'd be okay, impartial. Okay, so after 10 <laughs> items, mm -hmm. So you. are you be so we're going to determine are you being deported? Oh, God. You use a total of three English terms <gasps> and seven Australian. Oh my god, you're I, not being deported. You well are done. Staying in the country. Advanced Australia Fair. Well done. Well done. Now let's go to our new segment. The what's it called? <laughs> not internet news. The TikTok. <laughs> oh yeah. Our new segment. The TikTok challenge. <laughs> Welcome to the very first Twins Try TikTok. Yes, that's really good alliteration, by the way. That's like four letters, Twins Try TikTok. Okay, but yeah, why are we doing this? Because nobody likes TikTok. Well, TikTok is an app that apparently lots of kids are using right now. And I think we should try to keep relevant at least. I think we're too old for this. But uh, Jimmy Fallon, I should say, this week started his own TikTok challenge oh. and I thought that we should begin by using his hashtag which is the tumbleweed challenge yep and um, so let's start that yeah let's see what we mean <laughs> So what do you think of that, Dennis? Yikes, my head hurts. <laughs> I bumped well, it. that was our first TikTok <laughs> ever, so I'm guessing we would improve over time. Yeah, I'll have tons of bumps in my head in the future. Yeah, I'm sure you could like wear lots of bandages like a turban if you want. 
problematic. <laughs> well, anyway, um, follow us there because we have zero followers. And um, yeah, um, on to the next challenge. Yeah! Okay, so now it's time for the pickle challenge. As you can tell by this board, in my lifetime I've had a total of four pickles in my mouth. How many have you had? Many. Many, as okay. well as pickles. So I assume that you've been um, practicing a lot then. I have, but just remind me what I've got to do. <laughs> so the pickle challenge, in essence, is trying to stuff as many of these gorgeous, slimy things in your mouth at the same time without chewing. Do I eat them in the end or do I spit them out? You, you can eat them, that's not something that I would recommend strictly, but um, this is the spit bowl. Oh, gross. Just imagine how many people have spat that's into this bowl. Disgusting. Like, but now this is quite the uh, sausage fest, isn't it? It is, my fantasy. Do you want to give this a nice whiff? Oof, this one's quite pungent. I'm in heaven. <laughs> This one is a sweet spiced chirkins. I love the pickles. Sweet and tangy. I can really taste it. So can I, and the pickles. Okay, are we ready to start? Yes! We are ready. Oh, I know that voice. <laughs> okay, so, so. What do I do? You pick them out using your fingers and then These put things. them in your mouth. And now let's no chewing. start. No chewing. So if I chew, I lose. You start again. We have no losers on this show. Okay, the first pickle has gone in. It's burning quite smoothly, I'd say. <laughs> now that the second pickle has got in, starting to laugh. Don't do that, that's three pickles. You can't have them exiting your mouth like that. I call that cheating. That's four pickles. Wow, you look like a blob of fish now. Five. Oh God, can you fit any more? Your mouth looks rather full. Six. Oh. Oh, no, try to do that six wide, just try it. Stuff it in more, down the throat. <laughs> and perfect. Six pickles. <laughs> and let's get a nice slow motion shot of the... Chicken spit. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. Wow. Oh. Never this again. This ball is really warm. Ooh. Hmm, wonder where that came from. I literally could not, I love pickles, I literally could not fit any more in my mouth. For real? My mouth's a small mouth. Okay, so you got six pickles. I could have just gone Let's on Let's get a photo, shall we? <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'll write mm -hmm. Willy. Mm-hmm. And you got six pickles, which wasn't a bad effort at all. Let's have a round of applause. <laughs> Clap myself. <laughs> wow. We've got a big crowd here tonight. They were tasty. And you are just under Philly D. And they are damn good. Which isn't bad. Now it's time for my personal favourite segment of the show, Comments of the Week. So let's cut to that. So this week's first comment comes from Sophie's Life. Love the video. Also, I knew what his bleep out was. Ha ha How did you know? What Video Games for Fun says, Despite my bleeping internet, I enjoyed this bleeping episode and will make sure to catch up the bleep later. Sigh, more bleeps. At least he censored himself. Well, Cara Bottrell says, When you don't get chosen for a comment of the week. Wow, rip. Broken heart. Well, I'm sorry, we only get to read four comments a week. It's not like we can choose everyone. We've got options now, can you believe that? And um, you're in this week, so um, if you complain, you're in. Lucky me, I get to read two comments. The first one is from Phil. According to him, um, he's sure that Logan will beat his score of seven. And he did. Poor Phil. Uh, and my last comment comes from Captain Fisman. He goes, Woo! Love this! Now that sounds a lot like him. And that was Comments of the Week! So, now this brings us to the end of the show. How did you find your time here, William? 
It was almost a pleasure. Almost a pleasure. Ooh, That's good it. enough for me. Seriously, I loved it. I'm a huge fan oh. of your show. I will never forget the Fickle Challenge for as long as I live. Sounds really traumatizing. I barely <laughs> miss an episode. I loved oh, Phil really? and Anthony's program. You two are such pros. Oh. I shall recommend you to all my friends. Oh, and that Being I shall honest. appreciate, particularly Chris Hemsworth. Absolute <laughs> That's star. the only friend I'm interested in. And you can ask where you can find me. <laughs> oh yes, exactly. Where can we find you? Where can okay. we find your friends? My YouTube channel and Instagram are both Kensington25. Subscribe, Continue. follow, like, comment if you like, as long as it's a nice comment. Yeah, no hate for this guy, guys. We don't like Seriously. hate. Or I'll boot you. Yes, he shall banish you. <laughs> and of course, join the Australian YouTube community forum if you're an Australian, New Zealand or got connect. Yes, all of those links are probably below. Um, if it's still the live chat, <laughs> uh, make, remember that you can still like the video and comment in the main comment section below, yes. as well as the live feed. The live feed comments don't count to anything. No, they no. don't. Apart from this week, which we were desperate and then went searching there. Anyway, um, on that note, hope you've had a brilliant week and see you next week. Bye! Bye.